Okay, so that last example was a great example of what to do when a graph is not given. No graph at all is given, just some points. Hey, hey, no graph is given. And so this is the exact same question, but notice, I'm not giving you the steps anymore. This is what the question will look like on a test. It'll say simply, find the equation of the line that passes through these two points. That's all it'll say. It'll say nothing else. You'll have to do all the work. This is how you set it up. First of all, if someone asks you for the equation of the line, first thing you do is you write this. Because I can give you a mark for knowing that an equation of a line is supposed to be y equals mx plus b. Okay? It's the first thing you write. So now, what do you want to do? You want to figure out what m is, and you want to figure out what b is, right? These are the steps. So for m, what is m? m is slope. You can write that down if you want. That's worth a mark, knowing that m is slope. All right, so I can't use rise over run. I can't use the counting method here, right? Because I don't have a graph. So I have to use slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I have no choice. I have to use that. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not a formula I'm going to give you. That's a formula you need to know. It's the change in y over the change in x. It's rise over run. So I'm going to take my two points, a, which is negative 1, 5, and b, which is negative 3, 11. I'm going to call one of them point 1 and the other one point 2. The first one I'm going to call point 1, so it's x1 and y1. The second one I'm going to call point 2, x2 and y2. So y2 is 11. So 11. y1 is 5, minus 5. x2 is negative 3. Subtract negative 1. Now be careful with that. Ne x1 is negative 1. So it's a subtract for here. This subtract is here. And this negative 1 is from here. So be careful. That's going to give us the negative and negative together, isn't it? A negative times a negative is a positive. So we're going to end up with 6 over negative 3 plus 1, which is 6 over negative 2, which is 3 over negative 1. Now that's a weird way to write this. And in one of the previous videos, we talked that this is the same as having negative 3 over 1. It means the same thing. I can put the negative in the bottom, or I can put the negative in the top, and it means the same thing. So that means that our slope is equal to negative 3. We've determined the first step in this question. I'm going to draw a line across it, because I've used up a lot of room. Let's come down here. The second step, I know my m value. We need to find b now. So what do we know? We know that y equals mx plus b, but in this case, we've determined that m is negative 3. So y equals negative 3x plus, oh, yep, negative 3x plus b. So, we need the b value. We can't use a graph. We don't have a graph. So what we do is we take one of these two points, it doesn't matter which one, and we're going to plug it in for x and y. So use either negative 1, 5 or negative 3, 11. I'm going to use negative 1, 5 because it came first. What this means is when x equals negative 1, then y equals 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wonderful equation, y equals negative 3x plus b, and I'm going to put in negative 1 for x, and I'm going to put in 5 for y. That's going to give me... 5 equals negative 3 times negative 1 plus b. That's going to give me 5 equals 3 plus b. 
That's going to give me 5 minus 3 equals b. b equals 2. I know the m value. I know the b value. So the final answer is y equals negative 3x plus 2. And that is your final answer. No questions asked. This is your homework. It says day one, day two, but that would be as if we were in a non-COVID situation. So your homework has no day one, has no day two. It's just all your homework. Get working on that, guys. We'll see you soon.